Good morning. Uh, today I'd like to share with you about the time when God rolled up his sleeves, uh, about the awesomeness of creation, and that compared with the marvel of our salvation. In Psalm 8, verse 3, which we'll read in just a minute, the psalmist makes mention of the heavens, the moon, and the stars which God has made. For all its vastness, part of that creation, the Milky Way, is said to be just one of billions of galaxies in the universe. Recently, scientists have mapped the more than 100,000 or so galaxies near the Milky Way. And they tell us that a single galaxy is made up of billions of stars. In terms of sheer physical size, the star UI, S-U-C-T-I, Scuti, however they say it, is considered to be the biggest known star. They say it's only 30 times the sun's mass, but has a radius of more than 1,700 times greater than the sun. Now that may seem impressive, but it's nothing, they say, compared to the size of the supermassive black holes, the largest of which is said to have a diameter of 78 billion miles, according to Astronomy News article in April last spring. And all of this, according to Psalm 8, verse 3, is the work of God's fingers. Verse 3, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, which you have set into place the sun and the moon and the stars, and the psalm goes on from there. Well, if I may say so, it ain't the work of your fingers that you do your heavy lifting with. So the creation of the universe, if I may say so, was then child's play for God, lightweight stuff. No, well, maybe, but in comparison to what? It may seem impossible that anything could rival the creation. Well, turn with me to Psalm 98. And there we find an answer to that question. What rivals the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the galaxies? Well, praise God for them. Amen. But here in Psalm 98, we have a far greater reason to break out into joyous worship and praise and celebration, adoration of our God. We sing praise for the salvation that he has provided, and even greater than that, for the motivation that moved him to provide it, his love and his faithfulness for us as his creation. Of that love, the psalmist in Psalm 136 couldn't get it out of his mind, for in 26 verses, he says 26 times, his love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever, 26 times. This call for praise is focused on God's greatness the greatest feat of all time and for all of eternity, the provision made for our salvation. Follow as I read in verse 1 through 3. Hit pause if you need to. Get your Bibles. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sun, moon, stars, galaxies, black holes, dark matter, finger work. Salvation called for heavy lifting, rolling up of the sleeves, bearing his arm. It's not for lightweights. Only God, with all of his being coming into play, could and did pull off salvation. That the term arm represents power and strength, the psalmist said in Psalm 10, verse 15, break the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Call him to account for his wickedness. Break his power over us, in other words. Sun, moon, and stars spoken into existence. Salvation called for God to get personally involved, to change, as it were, dangerous to say, but his very being emptying himself, humbling himself, to become Emmanuel, God with us. Sun, moon, and stars, no opposition to the creation. Salvation called for taking on salvation, taking on Satan, taking on Satan and all the forces of hell and all of fallen humanity. And with this in mind, the psalmist then calls us to praise. In verse 1 through 3, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known. He's revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. 
the call for praise, sing a new song. Something is going on here that calls for jubilant celebration. And what is it? The cause for this praise, God's provision of salvation, three times mentioned in the three verses we read. Motivated by his desire to make himself known, his love and his faithfulness. His primary motive for interacting with us is his intense love coupled with his holiness. It's what resulted in the penning of John 3.16 that God so loved with such an intensity, so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever, that's me, that's you, that's everyone. God so loved the world that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life, everlasting life. Expressed in another way in Romans 5.8. God proved his love, demonstrated his love for us by dying for us while we were still sinners. It reaches its climax in John 17, 23, where Jesus tells us that the Father loves us even as he loves his Son. In verses 4 through 6 of the psalm, there we're told how we should respond when we consider the scope of our salvation. The arm work of God compared to the finger work of creation. God went all out in providing it. He bared his holy, mighty arm. How can we do anything less in offering up our praise? Verse 4, shout to the Lord all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp, and with singing. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Sing for joy before the Lord, the King. We respond by bursting out into song. We acknowledge that God is the king. He rules. He sets the standards, the rules, and the requirements. He established a plan and carried it out. He is the faithful God who is loving, who is kind, who is king. The final three verses expand the call for praise and that to very creation itself. Verse 7, let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. The rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness, the peoples with equity. It is as, as though even all creation cannot adequately offer praise for the salvation that the mighty arm of God has made possible. We cannot even begin to, if we cannot even begin to understand the magnitude of the universe, with its sun and moon and stars, how much less can we possibly grasp the wonder of our salvation and what God has provided for us in it? It is a demonstration of his love, of his mercy, of his grace, of his forgiveness, of his holiness, of his majesty. It is a revelation of his very heart for you and for me. Paul attempts to put it into words in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 through 20. Where there we read, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all God's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and deep is this love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. God's love is wider than the universe, longer than the universe, higher and deeper as well. It is the evidence of all the powers of God coming together to work salvation for us, to demonstrate that love, that we may know and experience that love. Our Father, we praise you for this salvation. We thank you that it is complete. It goes before us, with us, above us, behind us. It protects us, it guides us, it keeps us. We praise you, Father that you love us, both now and for eternity. Amen.